Say its fifth generation Ibiza Super Mini is the most credible small car the Spanish brand has ever offered. More sophisticated underpinnings make impossible a more spacious cabin and a more dynamic driving experience. If you're shopping in this segment, it's a contender you simply have to try. When any brand sets out to create what in its own words should be the best small car in Europe, you know it's serious in its aspirations. And so it is with this fifth generation Ibiza Super Mini. For long-term profitability, it's one of the models the Barcelona brand simply has to get right. A car that must be beautifully engineered, but also deliver a little extra Iberian sparkle. The Sociedad Española de Automobiles de Turismo, or SEAT as we better know it, is well used to injecting a little life into the mainstream market. Its 600 model, launched in 1957, is the fun little runabout credited with putting Spain on wheels, over a million being sold to bronze Spaniards in just 11 years. Only when Volkswagen took control of the brand in 1986, though, did its appeal start to spread to the rest of Europe, with the Ibiza consistently the sales spearhead throughout over 30 years of production at the Spanish Martorell plant. Today, it's one of the three models that make up the so-called pillars of the company's lineup, the others being the Leon family hatch and the Leon-based Attica mid-sized SUV. This Ibiza forms the basis for an SUV too, an Arona model that aims to do for Seat in the Duke and Capture crossover sector what the Attica is delivering for the company in the larger Qashqai class. Here though, the Ibiza is our focus, just as it's been Seat's over a protracted development period that saw the previous generation model having to soldier on for nine years before this replacement design was launched in the spring of 2017. The brand wanted to wait for the availability of the Volkswagen Group's all-new MQB A0 platform. The chassis also used to underpin one of this model's closest rivals, the sixth-generation Volkswagen Polo. This Ibiza shares Polo power too, the range primarily built around a sophisticated one-litre TSI three-cylinder petrol engine, with able support from a 1.5-litre TSI Evo unit for those in search of an extra dash of Latin spirit. With this fifth-generation Ibiza, buyers also get sharper styling, a more spacious cabin, stronger standards of safety, and very class-competitive media connectivity. Everything needed, in fact, to push this car right back into contention in the Super Mini segment. Let's check it out. There's plenty of promise here. In its larger Attica and Leon models, Seat has shown us that its cars can deliver class-leading handling if all the right fundamentals are in place, primarily a modern, sophisticated platform which, for the first time in its history, this Ibiza now has. Even if you didn't know that, and didn't care, you might still remark on the dynamic differences this Ibiza delivers this time round. The big car feel that so many super mini makers talk about, but this one actually delivers. One of the things you'll notice in that regard is this model's rigid, rattle-free road-going demeanour, some of which comes courtesy of the 30% improvement in torsional stiffness made possible by the MQB A0 chassis. Now that in turn means flat cornering and benefits ride quality that's unbettered in this class. Even the more firmly suspended FR variants are comfortable on uneven surfaces and all models handle potholes and tarmac tears with more disdain than you'd expect any Super Mini to exhibit. That's providing you don't go and ruin things by bolting on the optional 18-inch wheel rims. We're slightly less sure about Seat's decision to extend that same big car feel to the steering, which as a consequence is a touch lighter than some really enthusiastic drivers might like. Uh, the helm in a rival Ford Fiesta is certainly a touch more feelsome. But there's not much in it, 
and the good news is that you still get enough feedback through your fingertips to keep you well informed on how well the front tyres are gripping on faster, twistier roads. Go for one of the plusher models and you also get a drive profile system uh, with a sport mode that firms up the steering as it sharpens up the throttle response. Bottom line, uh, if you'd ideally want a Super Mini with the spaciousness of a Skoda Fabia or Honda Jazz and would like the sharp handling of a Fiesta and the supple ride of a Volkswagen Polo, you'll get closer to it with this Seat than with any other class contender we can think of. None of which would be much use if the engines were to let the side down. The previous fourth generation Ibiza model featured nearly 20 different power plants in its extended lifetime, very few of which were in any way remarkable. Most of these, thankfully, have been consigned to history, but the Spaniards have seen the need to carry a few over, notably a minority interest 1.6 litre TDI diesel that's been developed to fit this car in 95 and 115 PS states of tune, and an entry level, normally aspirated three cylinder one litre MPI petrol unit with 75 PS that's predictably sluggish and in which overtaking maneuvers require quite a bit of strategic planning. It's best to avoid all these options and go for the 1 litre TSI turbo 3 cylinder petrol power plant we're trying here, the one the vast majority of potential Ibiza owners will rightly choose. If your budget's plump, you'll want to know that it's available in a top 115 PS guise that'll give you a six speed manual transmission or the option of a DSG dual clutch self shifting gearbox. Unless you really need an auto though, we'd suggest that you'd be better off sticking with this TSI unit in the volume 95 PS state of tune fitted to this particular car. Yes, the mandatory stick shift only has five ratios, but the engine's torquey. Uh, third gear almost cracks 100 miles an hour, so that's not too much of a drawback. Plus, the performance figures, uh, 62 miles an hour from rest in 10.9 seconds en route to 113 miles an hour, aren't much different to those of the Pokia unit. It's just as well that their manual gearbox is pleasingly light shifting because you'll have to make frequent use of it to keep in the engine's sweet spot just above 2000 RPM. If you do that though, progress can be gratifyingly rapid and there's an emotive three cylinder growl once you climb past the 4000 RPM mark. Look further up the petrol range and you'll find the cleverest engine in the lineup, the 1.5 litre TSI Evo unit. This one has four cylinders, but under light throttle loads, only two of them ever get used, thanks to smart ACT active cylinder technology. That allows this variant to deliver impressive near 60 miles to the gallon combined cycle economy, but rapid performance too, 62 miles an hour occupying under eight seconds en route to a top speed of over 135 miles an hour. Right across the Ibiza lineup, the surprise is, as we said at the beginning, just how much enjoyment is on offer from this bright and lively little car. Petrol variants turn into corners a little more responsively than their more nose-heavy diesel counterparts, but all derivatives handle with the big car fluency we referenced earlier. They're pretty enjoyable to punt around town too, though we'd suggest that parking sensors or the optional reversing camera would be worthwhile investments from the options list. Overall then, what we have here is a car on which you don't need to spend a fortune to have fun. How do you make a small car bigger without making it, well, bigger? Seat's design chief, Alejandro Mesonera, and his team have here given us a masterclass in delivering just that, aided in no small measure by the sophisticated MQB A0 chassis this fifth generation Ibiza now sits upon. This platform pushes the wheels right out to the corners of the car and, as a result, gains of around 95 millimeters in both overall width and wheelbase length make this a much more spaciously practical Super Mini than its predecessor, despite the fact that the overall length is pretty much unchanged. 
At the same time, this Mark V model has evolved into a very good looking small car indeed, thanks to an almost obsessive attention to proportion and detail from the Spanish designers. The clean lines and crisp edging give a real sense of tension to a shape that's recognisably Seat styled and incorporates a particular emphasis on triangles in areas like the door mirrors and the headlights. Apparently the idea is to suggest motion and direction. More of that comes as part of the frontal design's X-shaped motif, the bottom part of which is shaped by the outer framing of this lower air intake. Now that flows into a front grille given extra prominence by two character lines that flow down the bonnet to emphasise this Seat logo. And in profile, well stylist Methanaro was keen that this Ibiza should have a different, sportier profile than the other Volkswagen Group Super Mini models that will be built on this same platform and to that end lobbied for extra investment to move this windscreen pillar 90mm backwards to enhance the stance. Now this time around there's only this single five door body shape and Seat regulars who glance further back along it will note that the odd almost arbitrary angled coachwork slashes of the previous model have been replaced by two more mature considered horizontal creases just below the glass line. One flows from the front wing to the middle of the rear door while the other begins just ahead of the rear door handle then flows back towards the rear light cluster. There's also a lower rising swage line just above the sills connecting wheel arches that can house alloy rims of either 15, 16, 17 or even 18 inches in size. We've got 16 inch design rims here. At the rear the triangular theme continues primarily with the distinctive nighttime signature delivered by these LED tail light clusters standard providing you avoid entry level trim. Now from this perspective you might also appreciate this Ibiza's relatively low slung stance. You've got 23 millimeters less roof height here than you'd have with say a rival Skoda Fabia and that makes all the difference when it comes to visually distancing this Seat from some of its boxily boring rivals. Time to take a seat up front, which is an area of this car into which a huge amount of design budget was poured. A wise choice on the Spanish brand's part. Now there's never really ever been very much wrong with the way that the outside of an Ibiza looked, but earlier versions always felt dull, cheap and plasticky once you got behind the wheel. This one's much nicer thanks to many elements borrowed from its larger Leon family hatchback stablemate, including a smarter dash and upgraded upholstery. It's all a big step forward, to the point where this could be the cabin of a premium brand model were it not kept in its place in the Volkswagen hierarchy by a few hard services where you might hope for softer ones on the dash and the door tops for example. Even these though are nicely finished. Seat says that all the controls and instruments have been set as high as possible, though that directive appears to have been ignored in terms of the lowly sighting of these ventilation dials in front of the gear stick. Still, at least climate functions haven't been relegated to little menus on this infotainment screen just above. This monitor, one of the highlights of the redesigned cabin layout. Lower spec models get a humble 5 inch media system touch infotainment setup but further up the range or as an option you can get this far superior 8 inch media system plus package. It comes with 3D navigation, voice recognition, a DOB audio system with a couple of extra speakers and the Spanish brand's full link smartphone mirroring technology that connects your handset into the center dash screen via either Apple CarPlay or the MirrorLink Android Auto systems. Users will also be able to uh, sync their email, social media lists and digital playlists via the touchscreen, while for those still in the last century, a CD player is provided next to the pair of SD card slots that you'll find in the glove box. Anything the monitor can't tell you will probably be covered off by the usual further small screen you get between the main gauges in the instrument binnacle with its neat carousel style graphics. 
The seating position is fairly low slung by super mini standards in keeping with this Seat's sporty pretensions. But getting comfortable is easy thanks to a good range of adjustment from the seat and the smart three spoke multifunction wheel. The seat offers decent under thigh support but lacks the optional lumbar adjustment that's available on say a rival Ford Fiesta to minimize aches and pains on longer trips. All round forward and rearward visibility is excellent, which is just as well because parking sensors only come as standard on top spec trim. What else? Build quality? Well, driven by exacting Volkswagen Group standards, that's always been a decent say at strength. Of the 5.4 million Ibethas so far produced since 1984, the brand claims that around 3 million are still on the road. This car is screwed together in a way that should continue that showing, and the switches and stalks uh, feel reassuringly solid, which is why this model's Spanish Martorell production line was also chosen to assemble the second generation version of Audi's considerably pricier A1 model. Moving to practicalities, well, there's most of what you'd expect. The door pockets and the glove box are both reasonably sized and a small storage area at the bottom of the centre stack gives you somewhere to stash your phone and your keys and includes twin USB ports and an aux in point. Twin cup holders and a coin tray sit alongside the thankfully conventional handbrake with a further cubby just behind. If you need more, an optional storage pack gives you useful under seat drawers. We like the little touches too, like the way that the air care filter in the ventilation system removes all allergens to create and maintain a clean air environment. Plusher models can have big car features like leather and Alcantara seat trim, adjustable mood lighting, wireless phone charging, and say it's Kessie keyless entry and start system too. Let's take a seat in the rear. Despite the fact that this fifth generation model is actually two millimeters shorter than its predecessor, access is quite acceptable by super mini standards. And once inside, the benefits of that extra body width and longer wheelbase will immediately be obvious, not only to owners of the old Mark IV Ibiza, but also would argue to those familiar with most other rival products in the super mini segment. It's certainly impressive that a car measuring in at only a fraction over four meters in length can allow a six foot adult to sit comfortably behind a driver uh, or front seat passenger of similar stature. Try doing that in a Fiesta. Now, this is all down to an extra 35 millimeters of legroom this time round. Unlike the previous generation model, there's now decent headroom too. As you'd expect, the additional width also makes a big difference. The feel back here being almost more like that of a Focus class family hatch than a Super Mini. For the first time in an Ibiza, the carriage of three rear seated adults is a sensible possibility for short distances, though the middle person's comfort will be severely compromised by this prominent centre transmission tunnel. The more likely scenario of needing to transport a trio of kids is easily dealt with, though storage space for their associated paraphernalia will be at a premium, something Seat could have done something about had not its bean counters rather meanly vetoed the provision of seatback pockets. Finally, let's take a look at luggage space out back. Now, remember we were talking about a focus class feel on the back seat? Well, that's even more evident here. Press in the large Seat logo that doubles as a boot release and the rear hatch opens to reveal 355 litres of luggage space, 63 litres more than the previous generation model could offer. Now, to give you some perspective on that, a uh, third generation Ford Focus offers 316 litres. More pertinently, the current Fiesta has 292 litres, a comparable figure to most other small cars in this segment. It's all worth remembering the next time someone tells you that most super minis are much the same. In everyday use, we found that the additional capacity makes the difference between struggling with, say, a couple of big suitcases and a small buggy, or fitting them in quite easily. Not that everything's perfect back here. It's annoying, for example, that the brand charges extra for a dual height boot floor, which is why we don't have it here. 
As with most super minis, there's no space saver wheel, something we consistently disapprove of, though at least the fiddly little tyre repair kit you get instead should free up some extra space beneath the boot floor. Not in this case it doesn't. If you need more room, then of course you can, as usual, push forward the rear bench. Now, it'll be split folding, provided you've avoided entry-level trim, but it doesn't fall quite flat. Once retracted, up to 823 litres of space is revealed. So that claims that Ibiza customers are, on average, around 10 years younger than those for models from rival brands. So it's important that this car remains affordable, or at least relatively affordable. The actual figures are, in fact, pretty typical by class standards, asking prices ranging from around £13,000 to around £19,000. In terms of body style choice, Seat has both given and taken away. For sure, the availability of the Ibiza-based Arona compact SUV will certainly increase the Spanish brand's sales presence in the small car segment. But if you're looking specifically at an Ibiza, there's much less body style choice than there was before. The three-door and estate variants you got in the previous range have been dropped this time round, leaving just this single five-door option, though that's the one most potential customers will want. Seat is offering a couple of 1.6-litre TDI diesel models for the dwindling number of super mini buyers wanting to fuel from the black pump. But these will be ignored by most likely customers, people who will almost certainly end up with three-cylinder, one-litre petrol power, that being the engine configuration dominating the model lineup. Now, assuming that's what you want, we'll need to start by pointing out that there's quite a gap in technology between the entry-level 75 PS MPI unit and the 95 PS TSI power plant we're trying here. Enough, we'd say, to justify the pokier and more efficient TSI's £600 price premium. Affordable MPI and TSI derivatives come only with five-speed manual transmission. But if you're prepared to spend over £16,000 on an Ibiza variant with sportier FR trim, you'll have more options. At this level, the 1.0-litre TSI engine comes not only in this 95 PS guise, but also in an uprated 115 PS state of tune. Now, the extra £600 necessary to provide the more eager unit also gets you a six-speed manual gearbox and the further option of DSG auto transmission if you want it. In addition, FR buyers have the option of the only bigger capacity petrol engine in the range, the 150 PS 1.5 litre TSI Evo unit that's almost perky enough to interest folk who previously might only have considered an Ibiza in hot hatch Cupra form. On to the value proposition offered by Ibiza pricing in the Super Mini segment, and the news that, as ever, this Seat sets out to be competitive without necessarily providing the cheapest choice in its sector. Now, obviously, the real bargain brand contenders in this class undercut it, cars like Dacia, Sandero and the MG3, and so do some more mainstream models like the Kia Rio, the Suzuki Swift and the Citroen C3. These small cars, though, aren't as good to drive or as media savvy as this Spanish model. The Barcelona brand hopes that will matter to likely buyers. Bear in mind when you're doing your comparisons that air conditioning is standard on all Ibithas. That's a feature you often have to get beyond baseline trim to have with some rivals, cars like its Volkswagen Group stablemates, Skoda's Fabia and Volkswagen's Polo. The Fabia is practical and very affordable, but its boxier, conservative styling will put off some potential Ibiza buyers. The Polo, as you would expect, trades a lot on its brand equity and shares all this Seat's engineering. Specify one in a like with like spec against an Ibiza, though, and it's quite possible that you could find yourself looking at £1,500 or more extra to own the Volkswagen. Your call. You'll also want to be briefed on the Ibiza's value proposition against the really strong sellers in the Super Mini segment. The Ford Fiesta's a strong contender, but it's the only other car in this class as good to drive as a Seat. 
Uh, we'd be put off though by the fact that the one litre T EcoBoost engine you'll need in that Ford for decent performance and emissions is the best part of a thousand pounds more than the directly comparable one litre TSI unit in this Ibiza. Price wise, Vauxhall's Corsa stacks up better. In fact, you might assume it to be considerably cheaper than this Seat until you realise that baseline Corsa variants use Altec engines that are much less efficient. Go for a clean, frugal, properly modern power plant in a Corsa, say the 1 litre i 90 PS direct injection turbo equivalent to the TSI power plant we're trying here, and there's no real price saving in going for the less stylish Vauxhall. And other super mini rivals? Well, you might save a fraction on, say, a comparable Hyundai i20 or Renault Clio, but it's probably nothing that your Seat dealer couldn't match with a bit of negotiation. Finally, to own comparable versions of cars like Peugeot's 208, Toyota's Yaris, Honda's Jazz and the Mazda 2, you'll be looking at having to find significantly more cash. If having considered all of this, you conclude that it is this Seat that you really want, then you're going to need to know just how generous the Spanish brand has been when it comes to standard specification. Well, let's see. Uh, we've mentioned the fact that all models get air conditioning. Well, in addition, even on an entry-level S variant, there are niceties like uh, Bluetooth audio streaming, uh, auto headlamps, uh, a height-adjustable driver's seat, powered mirrors, uh, daytime running lights, and a trip computer. Unfortunately, there's no DAB radio included at this level, but you do get SAT's Media System Touch infotainment setup complete with 5-inch black and white screen, USB port, SD card slot, and steering wheel mounted controls that allow you to operate the four-speaker stereo system. As mentioned earlier, ideally you'd want to avoid the entry-level 1-litre MPI petrol engine and get the pokier, more frugal 1-litre TSI turbo unit we've been trying here. To do that though, you've at least to stretch to the next trim level up, SE, which is what we've been trying in this case. Now at this level, though there's still no DAB radio, you get the split folding rear bench that, rather meanly, is deleted from baseline spec. There's a smarter look, courtesy of 15-inch alloy wheels, front fog lamps, a chrome-framed front grille, and body colour for the door handles and mirrors, along with LED technology for the daytime running lights and rear lamp clusters. The same goes inside, where leather is added to the steering wheel, gear stick and handbrake, and the media system touch display gains a colour screen. Beyond SE trim, you've two options. If you want to emphasize this Seat sporty side, you'll want an FR model. If luxury matters more, you'll prefer an Excellence variant. In both cases, you get niceties like dark tinted rear windows, rain sensing wipers, multi-colored ambient lighting, an auto dimming rear view mirror, an alarm, cruise control, and the Seat drive profile system that allows you to tweak steering and throttle feel to suit your mood. Plus, in both cases, the infotainment on offer gets a major upgrade to Seat's Media System Plus setup, which comes with a larger 8-inch screen, 3D navigation, voice recognition, that DAB tuner, a CD player, and the Spanish brand's full-link smartphone mirroring system that connects your handset into the center dash screen via either Apple CarPlay or the MirrorLink Android Auto systems. We'll finish the standard kit rundown with a few specifics on the two top trim levels. Ibiza FR models get a slightly more dynamic look and feel thanks to smart 17-inch dynamic alloy wheels, sport suspension, twin exhaust pipes, sport styling for the rear bumper, sport seats, and a flat bottom steering wheel. Excellent buyers, meanwhile, get 16-inch alloy wheels, leather and Alcantara upholstery, uh, Kessie keyless entry, dual zone climate control, all-round parking sensors and a rear view camera. When it comes to options across the range, Seat has been pretty restrained in terms of what's on offer. With base S trim, you'll be offered a DAB radio, an alarm and metallic paint, and that's about it. An SC spec model like this one gives you many more options. In the case of this particular car, for example, infotainment has been substantially upgraded thanks to the addition of a Beats sound system and that Medium System Plus infotainment setup with full link connectivity that we just mentioned. 
go for that and you additionally get the option of a connectivity hub that gives you a wireless phone charger. Uh, this car also has rear parking sensors added as an option, but as an owner, we could alternatively have gone for a Vision Pack Plus, including all round parking sensors and a rear view camera. Some SE buyers will also want dark tinted rear windows and the convenience pack that includes rain sensing wipers, power folding mirrors and an auto dimming rear view mirror. What else? Well. SC and FR buyers might want to add dual zone climate control and Kessi keyless entry. While further possible options right across the Ibiza range for those avoiding entry level trim include full LED headlights, a panoramic glass roof, a space saver spare wheel and adaptive cruise control that will automatically regulate your Ibiza speed on the highway. Give the base S variant a swerve and your dealer will also suggest that you might like to go up a size in terms of the alloy wheel rim that's fitted to the spec level you choose. So, for example, the rims on this SE variant have been upgraded from 15 to 16 inches. We'll finish our review of optional extras by mentioning some practicalities. We'd certainly tick the box for the storage pack that gives you a two-level double boot floor, a boot floor storage net and drawers under the front seats. There's also an adventure pack that gives you a protective load liner, a safety kit and roof bars with a holder for a surfboard, skis or a bike. Those whose adventures are corporately orientated might want the business pack that gives you a headrest clothes hanger, a headrest hook, a power bank for charging your devices, an umbrella and an integrated pen and notebook. Parents, meanwhile, will be offered a couple of family packs that include child seats, a protective load liner, a seat cover and a child monitoring mirror. On to safety, and there's been a big step forward here. The previous generation Ibiza model didn't even include the curtain airbags that these days you get in tiny city cars. So that was the first thing for Seat to put right. Twin front, side and curtain bags are now standard across the range. The brand also realised that to retain this Super Mini's previous 5 star Euro NCAP safety status, some more sophisticated safety stuff would be needed. Hence the inclusion on all models of Front Assist one of those camera-driven systems that at urban speeds scans the road ahead as you drive in search of potential accident hazards. If one is detected, you'll be warned. If you don't respond or aren't able to, the brakes will automatically be applied to decrease the severity of any resulting accident. In addition, there's also a clever multi-collision braking system that automatically brakes the car down to a, uh, around six miles an hour after a collision. So if, say, someone hits you and, understandably, you go to pieces, your Ibiza will automatically sort itself out. More predictable standard safety kit runs to Isofix child seat fastenings, active anti-whiplash front head restraints, tyre pressure monitoring, hill hold control to stop you from drifting backwards at junctions and the usual electronic systems for traction and stability control. Plus there's an ABS braking system that flashes the brake lights to warn following motorists if you're making an emergency stop. FR and Excellence variants also get a tiredness recognition system that monitors your driving reactions for drowsiness it'll recognise by prompting you to stop for a restorative coffee. You can add this into an SE variant like this one by ticking the box for a driver pack that also includes cruise control. All of this uh, delivered this SEAT a strong result in Euro NCAP safety testing with a standout performance in adult occupant protection, 95%. There was a 77% in uh, showing in child occupant protection and a 76% showing when it came to pedestrian safety. We've talked a lot in this film of the advantages of this Ibiza's lighter, stiffer MQB A0 platform and when it comes to issues of running cost efficiency, it continues to make quite a difference. Not enough of a difference though, it must be said, to completely offset the weight penalty that comes with this fifth generation design's tougher structure, 
uh, higher quality fittings and extra safety equipment. So where the one litre TSI version of the previous model could equal the returns of a rival Ford Fiesta one litre T EcoBoost by delivering over 65 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and sneaking just under the 100 grams per kilometre of CO2 barrier, this time round an Ibiza with the same three cylinder TSI petrol engine delivers 60.1 miles to the gallon and around 106 grams per kilometre, whether you order it in 95 or 115 PS guises. At least there's no efficiency penalty if you take up the option of ordering the 115 PS unit with DSG auto transmission. Overall it all adds up to a pretty class competitive showing, aided by the fact that this Spanish Super Mini remains relatively light, still weighing in at only just over a tonne. If you prioritise low running costs in this class of car, it's certainly to the three-cylinder, one-litre TSI turbo engine that we direct you. This unit provides the frugal running cost returns and willing performance you'd expect from the Ibiza range's provided 1.6-litre diesel option, but without that TDI power plant's high upfront cost premium and more expensive fuel prices. One reason why is that the TSI engine features efficient variable camshaft adjustment and particularly optimizes uh, thermal management, which significantly reduces emissions in the whole warm up phase. As a result, it's far more economic than the cheaper, normally aspirated 75 PS, one litre MPI petrol variant, a unit that can manage only 54.3 miles to the gallon and 112 grams per kilometre of CO2. That'll see an MPI buyer paying £160 for the first year's vehicle excise duty, while the benefit in kind rate for company car drivers will be 21%. In comparison, if you pay the extra for this alternative turbo TSI 1 litre Ibiza, your first year tax disc will cost you £140 and you'll have a benefit in kind tax rate of 20%. If you're after even pokier petrol power, then your dealer will suggest you consider the 150 PS 1.5 litre TSI Evo motor that's offered to FR customers, an engine that's clever enough to switch off two of its four cylinders when running gently, thanks to so-called ACT, or Active Cylinder Technology. As a result, though this unit has the performance to get you to 62 miles an hour in under 8 seconds, it can, when driven more gently, be capable of nearly 60 miles to the gallon and 112 grams per kilometre of CO2. That should give you a decent range from the 40 litre fuel tank common to all variants. Sayat has achieved this standard of efficiency by including all the usual efficiency tools at the disposal of modern automakers things like uh, brake energy regeneration and a start-stop system that cuts the engine when you don't need it, stuck in traffic or waiting at the lights. If you've got a variant fitted with the optional drive profile system, you'll have an eco mode that'll focus all of the car's systems towards more efficient operation. And across the range, there's a gear shift indicator on the dash that aims to enable ordinary owners to get somewhere near the quoted returns on a regular day-to-day -day basis. But more use in that regard, though, is the Eco Trainer system that comes included if you opt for an Ibiza fitted with the Media System Plus infotainment screen package. Here, your driving is rated for things like braking, throttle use, and anticipation, and points awarded. It's like being back at school, isn't it? Uh, the results of your efforts then visualised on a graphical Eco Points overview screen. You can also ask the Eco Trainer for efficiency tips, though personally I wouldn't, because most of them are, to be frank, rather blindingly obvious. Things like always drive in the highest possible gear and keep your speed constant. Likely Ibiza owners will of course be concerned about more than just fuel economy and taxation orientated CO2 returns. They're going to want to keep their maintenance costs down, for example, uh, something of a challenge with this car given that service intervals are reasonably frequent every 10,000 miles. The fixed price packages your dealer will offer you should help with this, providing either one or two years of cover for as little as £15 a month. We should also mention that residual values are pretty reasonable by class standards. Expect uh, 38 to 40 percent of your original purchase price back after the industry standard three-year 60,000 mile ownership period. 
What else? Well, they say it's usual three-year, 60,000-mile warranty. Uh, that's a bit unexceptional when rivals like Toyota and Hyundai offer five years of cover as standard, and Kia offers up to seven years. However, the SEAT deal is extendable, so you might be able to negotiate on that. And it includes two years of Europe-wide roadside assistance. Finally, we'll tell you about insurance, which is more affordable than it was with the previous generation model. The base 1 litre 75 PS MPI unit is rated at either 5E or 6E, while the 95 PS 1 litre turbo TSI petrol engine we've been recommending is rated at either Group 11E or 12E. The 1 litre TSI 115 PS model is rated at Group 15E. Ibiza is important to Spain, and this one certainly is to say it. Over 5.4 million examples of this car have been sold since the original first generation model's introduction back in 1984. Place all of these end to end and you'd have a line stretching from this model's Martorell Spanish production plant to Auckland in New Zealand. This car is, in short, something of an Iberian success story and one that looks set to continue for some time yet. A stiffer, cleverer platform and a bit of extra technology have revitalized the Ibiza's proposition, to the point where it's now a super mini you simply can't ignore. Unlike many other affordable small cars of this kind, it's fun to drive. And unlike other fun to drive contenders in this class, it's relatively spacious inside. Plus, this car is safe, comfortable and well connected. Other issues? Well, it's hard to find too many. As we've suggested, there are cheaper contenders in this class, so if you don't care about handling dynamics, you might be tempted to look elsewhere for that reason. If, on the other hand, you do like your driving, uh, and you come to this car from a rival Fiesta, you might notice that the steering of this Seat lacks just a little touch of the involving feel that marks out that impressive Ford. But to be honest, there's not much in it. Otherwise, there's lots to like. The attributes we've already mentioned, further built upon by sharp styling and the low running costs possible from the one litre engines that the vast majority of customers will choose. In summary, we're looking here at a car that, like its brand, has matured nicely. One mindful of the fact that modern day Spaniards need to balance Latin spirit with sober sense. In this Ibiza, they have a small car that does exactly that. <laughs>